Welcome back. I'm Brad Edwards. Guilty. That was the verdict for one of Mike Madigan's longtime lieutenants. Now the question is, what's next for the man, who was arguably the most powerful state house speaker in the history of the U.S., Michael Madigan. For that, we get to our next guest, Ray Long, a Chicago Tribune investigative reporter, two-time Pulitzer Prize finalist who literally wrote the book on Madigan, the house that Madigan built, the record run of Illinois' Velvet Hammer. Mr. Long, thank you for your time. Good to be here, Brad. Thank you for having me. While we're on hammers, uh, the hammer of justice just fell on Tim Mapes, Madigan's longtime chief of staff. You've actually got a front page story uh, running today that despite the federal felony convictions and facing decades in prison, Mr. Mapes continues to cash in on his 150 large, $150,000 a year government pension. I thought felony convictions halted that. You would think so, wouldn't you? But the yeah. uh, state pension laws are pretty loose. And one of the things that they require is that a crime be directly connected to the time in which per a person was working there and be a direct line to their job duties. But of course, uh, Maves uh, lied to the grand jury three years after he was tossed wow. out of office by Mike Madigan because Mapes was accused of sexual harassment and it was in 2018, the year of uh, Me Too reckoning mm -hmm. in Springfield. So it's gonna be uh, an argument that he can make that uh, he should keep his pension and uh, the laws are so loose, he's got a good chance. Yeah, the laws were all probably written by his former boss, too, so who knows? So if there was a gate between Michael Madigan and the rest of the world, he, of course, had a lot of gates up. Um, but one of them was Tim Mapes. Uh, and when the feds come, they bring their thunder for Mr. Mapes, former chief of staff. It was a three-week trial, 18 witnesses, several FBI recordings. They had Mapes lying seven specific times, 14 different topics all really about Madigan related business. You were there for that basically entire thing. What can you extrapolate from that? What might all these Mapes lies about Madigan business, I mean, he's convicted, so we could say lies now. What might this mean for the, the big boss man, Madigan and his trial? Well, I think one of the key things here, Brad, is that it was a big victory for the feds because mm -hmm. they showed with this case that uh, no witness is going to be able to slip and slide away right. with uh, answers like, I just don't recall, I don't remember what happened there. And they didn't actually get deep into what Madigan was doing. Uh, they uh, kind of scratched the surface about how Madigan and McLean had Mike McLean, a longtime confidant, had a relationship and they asked Mapes to talk about it. And even though McLean sat in a room right between Mapes and Madigan, Mapes acted like he didn't know what was going on. And so the uh, grand jury uh, indicted him. And then the jury, uh, like you said, there were seven points in which he could have been convicted on perjury alone. And uh, the the jury came back and checked seven boxes. Wow. Then they came back with attempted obstruction of, of justice and and uh, checked another dozen or so more. They only needed to check one perjury and one attempted obstruction of justice to find him guilty, but they did not hold up any of his excuses as good excuses. Yeah, I mean, you've seen any mob movies, you've seen the De Niro and Pacino always testifying. It's, yeah, I don't recall, I don't recall. Fascinating how the federal government really put that I don't recall in your face to Tim Mapes and says, no, you, we know you recalled because we have this much evidence. There's no way you could have forgotten it. Um, so, I mean, a, a huge win for them, but also shows really how much evidence they have. So now you, you were just talking, you know, kind of related to the ComEd 4. So long after four others were indicted, the ComEd 4, including former CEO, all guilty. Long after that, Mapes was in, in front of the grand jury with an immunity order, uh, meaning 
if he told the truth, he'd skate. He'd be off to retirement collecting this 150 grand you're talking about on the front page. Cushy consulting gig, probably sipping Ar Arnold Palmer's at a country club. Um, yet the, the jury said, despite the get out of jail free card, he lied and lied and lied. Uh, you sat at the trial. Um, knowing he had that get out of jail free card, but he had the specter of Lord Madigan over him. I mean, what was kind of most telling in that courtroom? Well, the amazing thing here was that he could have just told the truth. Right. The, the lies that they caught him in were not big tells, right. but right. he uh, still did not do that. And it's like he was trying to outsmart the grand jury. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good idea, especially in uh, the Northern District of Illinois. He clearly uh, was unable to evade them. And every time he had an answer in the grand jury, and they played the tape, Brad, they played the entire mm -hmm. tape of the grand jury, an unusual event. They played that for the jury, and uh, then they would come back, the prosecution would come back and play tons of tapes that would show that he did know stuff and did uh, do things that he said he had no idea why he would be involved with. Almost as if he came off, we of course have no idea what happened behind closed doors in the grand jury, but came off condescending, uh, arrogant, and the, the, the jury probably picked up on that, the grand jury. Okay, so this is a little overarching here. Overarching case, the, the feds have nailed a number of people, and from a jury, retired CEO of Exelon Utilities, probably the biggest name, but other background players, Mapes being one of them. But if you're a big game hunting, which the feds are, their top targets are former Speaker Mike Madigan and then uh, tangentially Ed Burke, former all to the most powerful, longest-running politician in the state's history. If you're those two men, this is a house of cards, uh, your foundation has now fallen. It's cracked. All that's left are the top two cards. The question, are they kings or jokers in this drama? Uh, sorry for so many metaphors, but you've uh, covered all this, all the tangential trials, and literally written the book on Madigan. How do you see this playing out near-term and long-term? Well, Brad, of course, there's going to be battles, uh, uh, legal battles and all kinds of uh, paperwork shuffling between the prosecution and the defense lawyers mm -hmm. who uh, are lined up uh, in, in gigantic conga lines behind Burke and Madigan. Mm -hmm. But what we'll see here is that the juries are not giving any quarter to, to these uh, crimes and uh, they have not hesitated to lower the boom all all uh, of the comed four were guilty of all all uh, counts and then mapes comes down with a gigantic boom against him too and so the the defense is going to have an uphill climb for both burke and madigan and uh, the prosecution is loaded for bear yeah, and yeah, that's 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 a good analogy there, and it clearly shows juries are they're part of the populace, they're part of the population, so they're sick and tired of it. And as you mentioned, so appropriately, it's not like Mapes was lying about the conspiracy of the century. He was kind of just in some of his stuff lying about not knowing a guy. Right, um, right. It was uh, quite uh, uh, a, sh a shocker, really. But I think what the feds were doing. Uh, uh, was that they were sending a signal, Brad, mm -hmm. that anybody who thinks that they can slip and slide and, and skate around mm -hmm. the, the prosecution when they're trying to get the truth, they better take a lesson here from Tim Mapes because anybody who thinks they can outsmart the prosecution had better think about it again. Ray Long, Chicago Tribune. He's here today and uh, with another front page article on it. Thank you, Mr. Long, for your work and continued work. We uh, will continue to read it, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Brad. It's great to be here.